Tokyo Death Field reports. What's the collective noun for gravestones? We see them everywhere in churchyards, cemeteries, inside churches, inside cathedrals, and yet in the English language we don't possess a term to collectively describe them all. So I'm going to provide in this uh, video a few suggestions of what we might do here. This relates to my Archaeodeath blog I, I composed a few years ago asking this very question. Now we talk about cemeteries, burial grounds, churchyards, graveyards and those are terms for the space in which the dead are placed and in which graveyard gravestones are raised but they don't describe collections of gravestones. They also describe the paths, the trees, the boundaries, the rubbish bins. So a collective for a gravestone is not a churchyard or burial ground that might contain a, a place of worship too so that those terms are not adequate. Um, we can talk about a row of gravestones but often they're not placed in rows often there are huge gaps in between as here uh, where there are no surviving gravestones so a, a row isn't appropriate and a plot often refers to a single area where one or more burials are placed so they d that term doesn't work you can't have a plot of gravestones in short there's no term that effectively describes a collection of gravestones and when they're in place as a raised over graves but also in a mason's yard when they're being produced or indeed afterwards when they've been pulled down rearranged and perhaps redisplayed on the edge of a graveyard or indeed in some kind of other complex uh, arrangement i've seen many cases where they're they're placed in arrays or, um, in lines um, packed up together in close proximity and so we don't have a term for any collection of funerary monuments in the English language and that is a very frustrating thing for me as an archaeologist at one level it doesn't really matter and um, we can talk about just an assemblage but thinking about this question allows us to reflect further on uh, the challenges we have in thinking about the functions of gravestones as memorials and how they work in relation to each other because often they may have been raised at different times to commemorate families or individuals but they do te once constructed and placed together or rearranged together they, they, they have other associations other connotations for the community that uh, raised them or in the landscape in which they still exist. And so we need a term for this 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 uh, this kind of collection. So I looked at some of the collective nouns we have for animals, and and I found uh, a whole series of ones that might be appropriate. A swarm, which usually refers to bees, that works to a degree. It suggests the proximity and the collective nature of gravestones as they as they um, are uh, raised and rearranged. An intrusion. Well, that's for cockroaches, and that doesn't sound very positive, but it does refer, it does allow us to think about how gravestones often are implanted into the ground. They, they, they break vertically into the soil or create constructions over the soil and ground. A lamentation, which is refers usually as a collective noun for swans, and that's very apposite, I think. That's very appropriate. It gives a sense of the voices of loss that continue to perpetuate through gravestones both individually but also together whether in original location or relocated i do like convocation as in for eagles and i like the association of a convocation of gravestones because it gives a flavor of how uh, gravestones are often in dialogue with each other or a, 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 a brought to, a grouping that are brought together over time but they often uh, speak to each other about the same motifs the same ornaments the same expressions in memory of in remembrance in affectionate remembrance and also together they build a community a mustering as in stalks and again that evokes how gravestones accumulate over time um, how they they develop within a, a churchyard setting a chattering or murmuration as for starlings i like the idea of that because it gives a sense of the multiple voices that gravestones present present often multiple voices of the living and the dead on individual gravestones and how they all speak out in a, in a in a chatter as one walks past them and looks upon them a tribe as for sparrows and of course that gives a sense of the human and the collective a memory as for elephants well gravestones are all about memory 
remembering the dead, remembering the living that raised those stones and their relationships. So memories in here in grey stones and they lay dormant in grey stones until someone wishes to read them or reconnect to their place. An ostentation, as in peacocks. Now I like this idea because gravestones are not only about remembering the dead, they're about promoting their status, their, 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 their identity in life and in death. So they are a, a display focus. They are competitive in many ways. They show an investment of wealth by the family and, 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 and time and energy and devotion. So ostentation is, is appropriate in many cases, especially when we think of the more sort of gratuitous or grandiose monuments of the Victorian age. A congregation, as in plovers, seabirds. Now, gravestones are all about people, and in many ways people perceive them still as people, as are still having the identities of those whose names are inscribed upon them. And of course it relates to a church setting of people congregating every Sunday for worship, and therefore the religious connotations, a congregation, I think are appropriate too. A phalanx, as in storks, that military ordering in rows, the organisation, the structuring of the cemetery. Uh, those military connotations may be a bit overblown, but I think they're, they're, they're interesting. A labour, as in moles. Well, graves relate to digging down and excavating and interring the dead. But also the, lab the labour refers to the labour of memory, the work of memory, of carving the stone, raising it and also visiting it and adding flowers, adding other ornaments, cleaning it, maintaining it, perhaps repairing it. And so I think the labour of grey stones is an interesting collective noun as it evokes some of that work involved in funerary commemoration. These aren't things I'm generally suggesting we should adopt. OK, I'm just using this as a question to get us to think about how gravestones work together and build and develop and change. Some other suggestions have been put to me via social media. A sadness of gravestones, and I think that particularly applies to when they've been dislocated, reused in pavements and uh, arranged against churchyard boundaries and cemetery boundaries, no longer in place. They, they do evoke a certain sense of loss. They're in stasis, in limbo. Monuments that are alive, they're still visible and discernible, but are broken up or dislocated. And in many cases, they are rearranged into a monument to themselves. So could a collective noun for gravestones be a monument? Now, I would, if I was doing any archaeological writing, I'd probably just refer them to them as an assemblage, particularly when dislocated or as a cemetery, a burial ground, a graveyard, when in a collective space, but those don't work 100%. And so I just muse on this and I welcome further suggestions of how we might develop better terminology for greystones, not in their singular sense, but how they work together in spaces and places. And in thinking about this, I think it gives us a further sense of how greystones have and continue to work uh, to commemorate the dead, and to speak to the relationships of the dead with the living. They're in constant dialogue. They're once inanimate material, but also active, vibrant, living um, material culture that speaks to us and acts back on us uh, emotionally and socially and in other regards too, in many cases spiritually. So I hope that's a thought for you to take away. Um, what collective nouns can we develop? Further collective nouns can we develop for gravestones when found in cemeteries, churchyards, burial grounds, graveyards, inside cathedrals, inside churches, and also when they're dislocated and reused in pavements, in curbs of, of paths, and also in churchyard and church boundaries and against the churchyard walls, church walls. So I hope that was of some interest. If you want to read more, look at my Archeodeath blog where I've got a post about this and many other aspects of funerary commemoration um, that I, I've been exploring over the years. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Howard Williams on YouTube. In addition, consider following the Archeodeath WordPress blog at howardwilliamsblog.wordpress.com.